Hey everyone, Nick Owen here from the Hyperactive Bookworm. I am so excited. So today is the day that In Solitude Shadow by David Green is actually out. It was so exciting to wake up this morning and see it in my Kindle. Be like, ah! Um, I'm also really excited about getting my paperback. Apparently it's on its way. So I'm like, yeah. So this book, I was really lucky and I got an arc read for it. And I... I'm so blown away by it. I didn't actually know that it was it one of the main characters um is actually queer. And it was such a nice surprise. Um it's an ensemble cast and it's told from like third third point of view. Um and it's just so great. Epic fantasy and just the world building and the characters. Um, Colleen, who is the um, gay character who I just adore, I keep seeing it as she's the main character. Um, and I don't think it's just because she's on the front cover. I think it's actually more so because she is the one I can identify with. Um, and uh, this book is great. So I was lucky enough a few days ago, I actually got to sit down with David Green and talk about it. And we go on about random, random rants. Um, but yeah, so I have an interview with David coming up and I'm so excited by this book. I will put all the links down below and yeah, I hope you like the interview. Let me know in the comments. Um, and yeah, if it sounds like something you might like, by all means, go, go run, go get a copy. Um, cause it is out now. And I'm so, so excited. <laughs> All right. Well, I hope you enjoy. Hey, everyone. Welcome to um, the Hyperactive Bookworm. I'm Neen Cohen, and this is the lovely David Green. Hello. Hello, everyone. Um, <laughs> so today, the day that this will actually be going out will be the day that in Solitude Shadow actually comes out. So congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you from the future. From the past. <laughs> Excellent. You're <laughs> welcome from the past. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> All right. Well, first off, David, could you just give us a quick um, blurb or overview of what In Solitude Shadow is about? Um, yeah, I, I could read you the blurb, actually, but I forgot to, pre to have the blurb. Really, but I'll, let, I'll, 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 that's the best way of doing it. Um, um, so I don't it is. You spend, you spend so long creating a blurb that, you know, just sums it up for you. You want to yeah. be able to use it as much as you can. That's right. And and it saves me from, like, just rambling on about just nonsense for a little while, trying to describe <laughs> what the book It's like, well, it's about this. But also it's about this. But really. But really the underlying this. themes are, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is the blurb from... from uh, Amazon, I think. Yes, it is. Uh, they will have their revenge. Zana Alpenwood, a powerful mage, stands atop Solitude's wall, sta staring down at an army bent on invasion. 200 aged and forgotten sparkers are all at stand between the banished and the nation of Houtville. With time running out, Zana is forced to reach out to her estranged daughter, Colleen, and set her on an impossible quest. In doing so, Colleen must decide between her masters and her own conscience as she teams up with an unlikely allies to forge their way over land and sea. Will they arrive in time to save the, fortune, the fortress of solitude from destruction? Only one thing is certain. Ruin is assured if solitude falls. Dun, dun, dun. <sighs> Gives me the shivers. All right. So in Solitude's um, Shadow is actually book one, isn't it? Of the yeah. Ruin Empire, is it? Empire, Empire of Ruin. Ruin. I knew I'd get that wrong. It's a skill of mine, I tell you. <clears throat> now, everything that I've seen about this, because, um, dear bookwormers, um, I was actually lucky enough to get an art copy of this book, and now I just want the second one already, and this one hasn't even come out yet. Um, so it's just a brilliant read, and we're so lucky to have David here to chat about it. However, with everything I've seen about it, I didn't actually know when I read it, that the main character is Sapphic. Mm -hmm. 
that yeah. excited me so much. Was that mm -hmm. a conscious decision when you first started writing the book or was it something that Colleen just sort of developed and you went, sure? Um, no, I had, I had a pretty much um, <clears throat> in mind from, from the start because I didn't want to, a couple of the things that I can, I'm, I'm a big fantasy fan so like you know I, I've, I've read a lot of fantasy and like I enjoy a lot of fantasy but a lot of it is is very male orientated oh yes um, and um, not even just from like what happens in the books and stuff but also like the, the characters are generally always male or they're always straight and they're always you know what have you um, and uh, so I was like kind of, and they're always white as well which yes. is, you know, and obviously I'm white as well. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's why it appeals to 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 white white men so much, I suppose, um, just historically. But like, so there's a few things that I was kind of conscious of because um, this could have easily been a story that was um, about a male character and yeah. and his father, um, which there is that in it as well. There is there is that dynamic in it as well because it is a, a story about. Um, parents and, and the children but I wanted the kind of main thrust then to be I think if it wasn't between a mother and daughter it would have been um it would have been quite different I don't think it would have been as as impactful and I, so that was one of the first things I wanted to do was like right I want to I want to write this mainly because it is an ensemble cast but there it is yeah there isn't one like sort of real main character but if there was uh Colleen would probably be the main character maybe Zana was but they're, they're probably the, the joint lead I'd say um, so yeah, so I wanted to kind of do that. That was one of the first things that I was going into. I was like, well, I want it to be mother and daughter instead of um, father and son. But also as well, though, I wanted it to be uh, not just like uh, Zana, her mother is, is black, but her father was white. Well, Mediterranean sort of olive skin kind of thing. So I wanted to do that as well. Like I wanted to go with with that, which the, the cover artist really kind of captured really, really well. Um, Cover art is um, beautiful. It's absolutely stunning. Yeah, it's great. It's great. And then the the, the other side of it, a sexuality, was something that I, I I knew that from from straight on as well. Um, because I kind of I'd done a test run for this, but in um, and it was actually published in in, in Fairy River as well in uh, with Blood and Ash, which was Master and Apprentice as yes. uh, a short story. It's like a novelette, really. But it was kind of there was a, a few things that I was kind of playing with that. I mean, you've read both of them, so you probably saw some similarities from there, but there were some things that I was kind of wanted to kind of test out first before I started writing the full Testing book. the water. Um, You're just checking it all out. <laughs> yeah, just checking it out, seeing what works and seeing what didn't. And um, so the, the main character in, in Master and Apprentice is, um, is, is, uh, uh, is she's a lesbian as well. Like, and, um, but I wanted to kind of play around with just the, the subtlety of it because I didn't want to just be like, first scene that you meet her and she's just like oh this yeah. is what I am like you know yeah. it's kind of through more with the, with the personality and the writing and and uh the kind of like kind of get it through organically but it was definitely there from early days and that was because um in the second book I knew there was going to be like some kind of choice that she has to make between um not so much people but what it is that she wants um and it was that kind of came into it uh, because it was like, well, th that's that's the kind of dynamic that I kind of wanted to go with for it. So yeah, so it was, it was planned from the start, really. So it was. Uh, that's fantastic. Yeah, and I kind of, yeah, and I kind of, I didn't really kind of like advertise it all that much or anything. I'll talk about it all that much because it's just it's just part of who she is. That's um, what I um, love so much about it. It's it's not that's not the story, um, and there's so like there are a lot of. Um, lesbian fiction out there now but so many of it is about the sexuality that mm -hmm. is the story and I loved so much that it just it wasn't a it it was just a natural discovery like it, it was no big deal and she was just her and mm -hmm. I think that kind of representation for me was just it, I absolutely adored it. I love that it was just so natural. It was just part of it. It, it wasn't, it wasn't the, the big drama. It wasn't the big announcement. It was just, but it was there. It wasn't hidden either. It was, there was yeah. no mistaking it, but it was just, 
naturally woven in and that's just who Kayleen is which yeah, when yeah. I read it I have to say I kept calling her Celine because <laughs> it's a C people it's a C and I didn't know but now it's Kayleen okay I can deal with this I, I, <laughs> I saw someone I, someone uh, called her Chaline as well which is fine I can't, I, it's one of those uh, we've talked about before it's one of those fantasy things that, whereas like if people are just mispronouncing <laughs> names all over the place then it's fine because it happens like you know yeah. <laughs> um, like, I'm, a, I'm a big Wheel, Wheel of Time fan and, and like um, you know the, the, there's the TV show coming out this year and there's like obviously there's, there'll be changes when you're adapting it and stuff but the, the main drama is going to come from the pronunciation of names uh, guaranteed and even like uh, when you heard like Robert Jordan, like in because obviously like he he died like two thousand and seven or two thousand eight, so it was like you know uh, before everything was documented. Like I mean, stuff was documented on the internet then, but now everything is, and like you know, authors are interviewed on, on YouTube and everything all the time. So there's not that many recordings of him speaking. There's none like there's none like like on a YouTube channel. It's all like from conventions and stuff where people have recorded it and what have you. Yep. And he even he will pronounce names in a certain way. So people will be like, no, that's wrong. That's <laughs> You're only the author. How would you know? Okay. <laughs> no, um, so, yeah, like, um, and it's kind of the same because there's, there's a character in it that's called, like, um, uh, Mazarin Tame, and it's, his name is spelled T, his surname is spelled T-A-I-M, and the way that he pronounced it was Taim, and it's like, no, no, that's not right. That's wrong. <laughs> I've read these books loads of times, I've never pronounced it like that, so no. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's funny, like uh, all different kind of words that you have no idea how it's actually pronounced, but you've read yeah. it and you know what the word is, but yeah, there has yeah, to be. Like, I, I know that I pronounced some of them wrong, like even the ones that I've created myself, like there's, a, there's the, the God, like because there's a belief system in, in this book and there's the, um, the God's... Uh, what I call him race, but it's not, it's Ras. That's how you're supposed to pronounce it, because it's R-A-A-S, it's Ras. But I call him Wraith. <laughs> and I know it's wrong, but I can't stop myself from doing it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I know it's wrong, but it is Ras. Like, the, the town where he was, like, born is Ardras, which is, like, a kind of Irish kind of sounding. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I just can't, I just, I just can't pronounce it properly. <laughs> I know it every time that I'm reading it out to people and I say his name, I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh no, I absolutely loved this book. It was just fantastic. Um, were there any struggles that you had with any characters? I'm, I'm fascinated with people who struggle with any specific characters because perhaps maybe because I struggle. Um, but there's always one character for me that I'm like I can't get their voice did you have anything in in that sort of way yeah um I think uh not, not so much in terms of like what it was they wanted and and, and, and their arcs or anything like that I, that was I was that was that was okay um obviously a couple of characters only have pop up very briefly in this one because they're going to be bigger in the sequel so like uh, oh excellent next, like, uh, Nexus, who is like the master of war, like he's like in a scene, um, one of Cade's scenes, and then he's a POV character in one scene himself. But he is going to have multiple chapters in the second one where he can kind of get into a little bit deeper. So I knew I did kind of the groundwork for him, and I was kind of happy enough. But the um, the one that I kind of worked on the most was uh, Zana, actually. Um, oh, yeah. really? Yeah, because like I just I just wasn't kind of just getting the emotion deep enough with her and um, I, I kind of had her originally when hello uh, when I wrote it I wrote it like from, from the first draft till the, the copy that you've read like it was always um the beats were exactly the same her motivations were exactly the same but um I was just not kind of getting deep enough into what she into her head enough I suppose about like um the decisions that she'd made that kind of led her to where she was oh and wow the situation that she was in and like <clears throat> yeah so I just had to keep on kind of working on, on that and just getting that deeper and just kind of get it and obviously I mean I'm a, I'm a father like I have, I have a son um, and so I, I, I 
was able to do the Cade and Arlo relationship quite easily. I think it was, it was like, you know, I can kind of, I mean, you, you know yourself, you make decisions for your children every single day. And it's like, they probably, I mean, they're, they're young now, so they, they'll, they'll argue with you about some stuff. Oh, yeah. Saying, nah, chocolate or whatever. But um, <laughs> like, um, but the, the bigger decisions, like they don't know about yet. Um, yeah. You have to make them every day. But when they kind of get a little bit older, they'll start kind of, questioning them and that was like you know um big part of the Cade and Arlo one but also the the, the uh Colleen and, and Zana but it was kind of coming from it from a from a, a mother and daughter perspective mm. which was kind of trickier to get my head around because it's, it's different I didn't want to write it as as to as a mother and daughter but with like a male voice perspective no I appreciate that but that really surprises me because I adore Zana in this book. I think she's wonderful. So the work you put into her, spot on, because I absolutely felt that she was just completely, like, I got her, completely rounded yeah. and, yes. She's the one that I kind of got the most notes on from my beta readers. So the initial two beta readers was a. Uh, Chris and and uh, uh, Chris didn't deal deal to that. Chris is great because Chris is um really into the plot. So he'll be like, does the plot work? And does, does the plot make sense? There's the plot holes, and he'll he'll find those kind of things. Whereas an Andy was kind of he his when he was going for it, he's not a fantasy reader, which was great. So he was just looking at it from a character perspective, and most of his notes were. Um, tell me how she feels about this. Tell me how this is affected her. Tell me this. Tell me this. Tell me this. That was kind of good to get into that. And then when it went to Erie River and then um, the owner there, um, Michelle, read it and gave notes, a lot of hers were based on Zana as well. So, like, I had a lot of help with that one. That was was really, really helpful. Obviously, Michelle's a mother um, as well, and she's a great writer herself, and she's... she's, um, so she she helps out a lot lot with that one. So it was never really, like, nothing changed in terms of, like... What, where she was, what she was doing. Um, it was her, just enriching, her, enriching her yeah, character, I guess. Enriching it, yeah. Just just the relationship because it was a tricky one. Because like, obviously, there's no it's no spoiler because it's in the blurb. Like her and and Kalina estranged for for a specific reason, um, yeah. which is to do with basically like a decision that that Zana made, which she thought was best. For a daughter, basically, when it comes down to it, like it's a bit more to it. Like, and it's a there's bit more, a lot like, more to it, but. Oh, that just, that ripped at me because I could see both perspectives and mm-hmm. it was that it was just so real and human. Just yeah. that whole, there is no black and white, obvious right choice or wrong choice. It was, yeah, that made it just yeah. so much more believable and you just, you could connect with both of them because mm-hmm. neither was, really a bad guy or anything and it was just so rip your heart out that's that's good (laughs) if you can rip people's heart out it's all good i was hoping that would be the case because like it was one of those things where it was like obviously the thing that she does is 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 bad like the the actual act that she does and she knows (laughs) it but she thinks she's doing it for the right reasons and colleen thinks that you should never go to that place and there's always a different another way of, of dealing with things but like yeah. what i kind of wanted to do then is like obviously colleen has um as her like kind of partner in crime vetigan who's like a an older gentleman who is um very firmly on zana's side on this matter and they have that kind of little conversation at the start where like colleen is kind of thinking about her mother and yeah. like uh vetigan knows and he says like you know you should forgive her and saying like that no and then he's, he's saying that like you know she was a she was that she was her exile as a fast and all this kind of stuff and he says i know we're never going to agree about this so this is why we don't talk about it mm-hmm. but it's something that they, they, it's like and I, I, I hopefully that i mean i know from my experience that's a real thing for me and like it's, it's kind of like when you have like a best mate and they start going out with someone that you don't like yeah. <laughs> it's like 
we'll never agree about this. We're, we're, we're never going to be okay with it. Just don't talk yeah. about them in my presence. Don't talk about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, it's one of those kind of things. Like in the, so I was, I was hopefully trying to trying to get that kind of to be as like as true as possible. So I suppose, well, that was the thing. I think that's why I needed um, that input on, on Zana because she was very kind of, she was, when she was dealing with people at solitude so the other characters at solitude she was basically as she is now like she was the same character but then when she was dealing with helene which is obviously over a distance because the because of the way it's set up she yeah. was a lot more kind of kind of calculated i think instead of emotional ah i get what you mean yeah yeah it was all like because it was very kind of like thought based and stuff so i yeah. had to kind of just bring that kind of like one of the biggest things that i added to it was the bit where um there's a, there's a bit where she's going up through the, 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 the fortress and she looks through the window to look at the side that isn't facing into the banished lands and she starts sort of thinking about how she's never visited that side of the, even though she's allowed to, she's never gone because she just wanted to kind of exile herself inside this place. And then when she actually like, uh, like I kept saying, like she doesn't wear shoes or anything because she likes to feel of like, things like you know the, the stone and the floor against her and everything because it's big grounds her so when she first like kind of steps outside and, and steps on grass like that was what i think that, that i added as well where it's like she's like not, she hadn't felt that for 10 years and she's just been punishing cutting herself. herself off yeah 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 i mean that's where the title comes from as well like you know the, the solitude it's like the, the place that where it's set is called solitude but like it's um it's like the theme <laughs> of the book oh yes <laughs> The theme of the, and it absolutely is because you go into it and it's not just Zana who goes through this solitude. There's so much solitude for so many of the characters, that mm -hmm. isolation, whether it's self-isolation or situational or cultural, there's just, it just hits really well. Like it just resonates. Um, and uh, it's so hard for me. I just got to be careful what I say because I'm like, it's gonna spoil it for people but honestly it is such an absolutely incredible book I was completely blown away by it and just your way with words is absolutely brilliant it has such a there's so many parts in there that I've highlighted that the wording just brings that old fantasy epic fantasy feel to it um just yeah, I think it's absolutely fantastic. Um, but because I can't talk more about that without spoiling people, um, when you do write, because obviously this is not the only thing you've written, um, mm. are you a planner or, because I hate the word pantser, so I've recently heard a new term and I love it, are you a planner or a discovery writer? A discovery writer. Um... I heard another term for it, which was garden path writer as well. Oh, I like that. That works too. Well, I think uh, um, I think garden path is like kind of in the middle, which I would call a planter. Yep. <laughs> but works okay. well for garden, okay. plants. Yeah, we're there. Yeah. So I, I would <laughs> say that I am in the middle. I would say I'm a, if you want to, if we want to say planter, I'd say a garden path writer. So with that, it is basically like you have this like set space, I suppose. Well, you know where the beginning is, you know where the middle is, and you know where the end is. And then wherever the path will take you, you just walk the path. And find <laughs> out where it is. But um, very much originally, I was I was a, a discovery writer, but I've become more of a into the middle. Uh, now, like I, I will do synopsis for everything. Or synopsi. What is the, what is the. I have no of... idea. I, I was going to just let you go with whatever you came up with because. Yeah. I've got nothing. Synopsis, synopsis doesn't sound. Doesn't no, sound it right. doesn't sound very good, doesn't it? Doesn't. It? No. <laughs> uh, synopsis just, synopsi just sounds wrong. <laughs> it sounds really scientific. Yeah, um, neither is good. Okay, so you so yeah. you write a synopsis for each story now. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Um, so this one. Uh, so I have two series. Uh, series is. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, to, and funny enough like both of the first ones so this one and Nick Holleran which was a lot shorter they were both uh, just um, 
I just made them up. That's what's working. Basically, I had the characters. Um, so I had Nick kind of from the from the from Dead Man Walking sort of fleshed out. And uh, this one in Sarge Shadow, I had I had the most of the characters. Um like I had uh Colleen, Zana, Cade, and Arlo sketched out. And I knew like uh what the first book had to do, and I knew the series overall where it was gonna go. Um, but then I just made it up from, from the non so like most of the characters, so there's quite big characters that are in the book that I just didn't have an idea for at the start, like Tilo or um Vetigan. Um, oh, most of the people that are in, most of the people that are in Spring Haven, uh, Brina, um, you know, they, I had they didn't even exist when I first started writing it. Oh um, wow! So yeah, so um, and even like with uh, with Dead Man Walking, uh, like the the ghost in the corner of the room, like that was just something that I just wrote as a line when I was writing it, and then like I was like when I got to the end of it, I was like that would be a great sell for a second for a second book. Oh hell yeah! Book, if anyone doesn't know. David read wrote Dead Man's Walking and it got published, but it's getting republished soon, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah. Um, the sequel, the sequel is out um, on the same day. So the sequel is so the sequel ended up being about this character that was just basically a throwaway throwaway line at the start yeah. for a little <laughs> colour for the office, and um, and a. Uh, and then I was like, I'll use that as a hook for a second one. And it's like, and she, it's, she's basically the main character. Excellent. Of the I can't <laughs> wait. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's getting so the first one as well because it we um, it was with a different publisher, and then it, the set the sequel went to Eerie River, who was publishing um, In Solitude Shadow or, or the whole Empire of Ruin series, and um, they I had the rights for uh, Dead Man Walking Red reverted to me, so we were like, well, let's let's expand it and um because of i made it up as i went along so i was like yeah. <laughs> um, that, that, that was that was the larger point so like the so the first ones were made up as I went along and when we saw two shadow went back then after i'd finished the first draft and did a load of world building and stuff to kind of firm things up but then the second one of that one and the second nick collar and book have been very planned and structured um so that was the that was the thing with with the um opportunity to, to kind of redo dead man walking so it's the same story but i've kind of gone in, expanded some scenes, and then added some things that I'd be in the second book. Oh, yay! Book. So I get to reread it. I'm excited about that. Yeah, so we're going to do something with it. I mean, we're going <laughs> to be... Uh, I mean, the second one is, like, quite a bit bigger, and it's, like, a full proper release and stuff, but the first one, we're going to be doing it. We're going to be doing quite a lot of free giveaways for it and stuff. Cool! Because a lot of people have already read it, and essentially, like, I mean, uh, it was about 11,000 words, and... The redone version is about 20. So it's almost doubled in size. Wow, um, that's fantastic. So, That'll be great. Yeah, and I've just like, you know, I just I just kind of because there is a series planned arc for that one. Uh now that kind of came up as I was working on the second one and planning the second one. You people so like your back. series. <laughs> yeah, gonna be, I think there's gonna be five books in that one. Wow. Um, yeah, so like I've kind of gone back and just kind of added some little bits in and, and maybe some characters that are in the second book um excellent i've kind of mentioned them in the first one or added them because like basically like where the first book ends the second one book starts it's the same scene so it's like it's goes straight into it like it's there's no um no breather no time lapse or anything like that so it was like so i was kind of thinking about it and i was like well the, the second one introduces like a whole lot of different kind of characters and some different concepts like um so I was like I should really have them mentioned in the first book yeah um and then of course as well there's a few things that I like I was like I wish I'd done this one a little bit differently when when it kind of um the first one I came out like I mentioned COVID in it and it's obviously the the, the horror in books are set like the main timeline because obviously it flashes back some bits um is set in 2024 and um like and in the first scene and I mentioned like COVID specifically and I regretted that straight away and it had already gone in and been accepted and edited and gone through and everything and I, was like, I wish that I hadn't had it because it just it roots it too much in this world so now like I went back and just changed it to just general like pandemic or whatever because, yeah like, that's it, great it, that you've it, been able to do that though I'm really excited about that coming out as well 
Yeah, it's it's cool. Like it's it's good. Like I mean, it's I think I think it's generally. I mean, Dead Man Walking was really well received. Like people seem to like it. Um, mm. But I think this this expanded version is is better. And I think um, the second one, The Devil Walks in Blood, is going to be like it's things that people liked about the first one, but more of it. And there's just more of it in general. And I think yeah. it's got a more like, kind of personal kind of story in there as well. I mean, the first one has got personal stakes in it too. But so is the second one, and it's it, it is darker. Um, yeah. It goes to some very very dark places, like um, just from the the subject and the nature of like what's going on, because it's basically um, he has this uh, uh, ghost that lives in his office that like she's always just facing the corner, and like he's been there for years since he's been able to see these things. She's never spoke to him, and she's never kind of moved or anything and one time he spun her around so I look at her and she's got like her eyes are missing and there's blood on her face and everything like that and then um, at the end of the first book she just turns around and says to him like I've got to, I want you to find out who who killed me like and um, so obviously with that like you're going into kind of like you know child um, child abuse kind of things and, and the child murder and everything yeah. like that which is like you know it's this it's dark territory and everything and like the, the themes of the book, obviously it's like um, like uh, heaven exists, but hell, there isn't a hell beneath, like earth is hell, so all the humans have, have just been living in hell for who knows how long. Um, a so a happy fun little read. <laughs> but, but it's quite funny, I think, as well. It is, it is funny. Oh, look, that is the, thing. the original has some a hilarious laugh out loud moment, so I cannot wait to see the extended version and to see what happens next with Nick because he's a brilliant character. Yeah, he's fun. He's fun to write. Like he's he's such a he's a bit of a schmuck really. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he's he's all right. Like I mean he's uh he's probably out of everyone that I've written, he's the person that is most like me. <laughs> I love that you call him a schmuck and say, yeah, that's me. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. I am a schmuck, so like, it's, uh, <laughs> uh, it, well, he's very much like. I mean, we're we're about, we're about the same age because he'd be. Um, I think he's about forty two or forty three, and I know how old he is. He's forty two or forty three. So like, I'm just trying to figure out how old that. Yeah, so he's about the same age as me because I'm thirty eight now. So obviously in twenty twenty four, I'd be that kind of age. Um, we have the kind of same kind of tastes in like music and a kind of outlook on life, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Like All right, I, we I need to get back to in solitude shadow because I could talk about <laughs> Nick for way too long. Um, well, so that's, that's not pretty soon. Well, that, I mean that's out in July, so it's like it's it's not too. Oh far. hey hey, let's just do the whole lot now. <laughs> <laughs> but in solitude shadow, so it's actually a trilogy. Is that what's planned out? Three books. Yeah 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 yeah. That's trilogy. fantastic. Yeah, I mean, I think um, I've got I've got an idea for. Um, something set afterwards in the same in the same world um but it wouldn't be a lot of the same characters it would be different characters and, and a different um it, it would take part in a different continent um but the kind of ramifications of what happens in this series like will be felt in this in this story um but oh, i guess but... i have an idea of it yeah readers love so. that though i do I love being able to find little Easter eggs and stuff from, you know, uh, between books and references to previous books. And I love when, especially fantasy, because it's so great, love when fantasy books are set in the same world. I mean, you spend so long creating such a rich, delicious world. Like, of course you want to write more people in it. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, no, that sounds exciting. Now, question. Do you listen to music? Or noise when you write. Uh, mu music, I I have to like I can't it's the, if it's silent. Um, just the, the the clicking of the the keyboard just 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 gets to see me too much. I I'm just like I, I need to listen to something. So yeah, I do I do listen to stuff. Um, I usually make like a, a playlist and kind of match it to what it is that I'm kind of writing at the time. So um, like. Uh, a lot of the solid in Solitude Shadow was written to the the, the Witcher TV show um, soundtrack. Oh, excellent! Hmm. <laughs> Nick, uh, Dead Man Walking and, and the Devil Watson Blood <clears throat> was written to um, the Mandalorian soundtrack. 
Yeah, it's good. Uh, but like, you know, um, it depends really. Like, you know, I mean, yeah. <clears throat> um, like, uh, I, yeah, it depends. Like, I, I, but I'll just listen to music and I can just kind of let it fade into the background a little bit. Um, but I'll, 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 I'll sing along to it while I'm writing and just be oblivious to what's going on. But yeah, I can't. I can't have no. I can't have silence. I can't just have background noise. Like I can't. Um, like if the TV's on or something like that, or, or something, I just can't. Concentrate. You can't have that interspersed noise. So yeah. before all COVID, were you able to write, like, say, in a cafe or something, or would that type of noise interrupt and? Yeah, I've never written anywhere other than my house. Oh wow. My car, I've ridden my car once or twice. And one time I actually went and, and sat by uh, sat by the, the seaside and, and, and that one night because I couldn't really sleep and I was working on something and I wrote a little bit there, but it, it, I just got distracted by the sea. <laughs> so, um, you have very really, specific like, sounds that you are able to write too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I really like the sea though as well, so I just kind of get distracted by it. Um, but I didn't really do that much writing before COVID. So like oh, okay. before, before that, like I was working on, um, I was doing like creative writing classes. So like you get like homework to do like a little kind of 500 word or two page story or something. So I do that. So that'll be on a, <clears throat> that'll be on a Monday night. And then like, I kind of think about what I was going to do. Then I'd write it on the Wednesday and that, that would be it. And then I was kind of, then I started working on, um, a crime novel that's called the santa monica man which is getting published next year and it's ah, like, um, congratulations thanks i mean it's been that's but that's been uh, i got i got accepted somewhere like this time last year i think but well, it's gonna be a while before it comes out uh. um but it's, it's, it's basically it's um <clears throat> that's a, a true it's like a, a noirish 1940s set Oh, um, fantastic! I don't know, there's, there's nothing. There's no fantasy in it or anything like that, or, or anything. It's just it's. A, it's a, I don't read that genre at all. <laughs> I lo I love the films set in that way. I mean, I love like uh, Chinatown, The Third Man, and um, uh, Maltese Falcon, uh, and all that kind of stuff. The Long Goodbye. Um, I love all that kind of stuff. Um, so it was kind of like my kind of homage to that. Um, I don't know why I started writing it. It's <laughs> like if you like it's. It was just one of those things, and I was and I was basically just doing a chapter a week, and so that's what I was doing before COVID, and I finished it. Um, I finished it in February last year, so February twenty twenty, just as COVID was kind of yeah. Was and then I was like, well, what's next? What can I do next? So I was like, I have this novel. Um, and what else do I do? So I just started like looking around on Facebook, and I found Erie River, I found some other like kind of communities. And I was like, oh, you can actually just like submit stories for calls and stuff. So I, I, so I just started doing that in March. It's a bit like that, hey? You, you don't know till you're there. You don't know yeah, what yeah, you don't know. <laughs> exactly, yeah, exactly. So like I only started doing that in March last year. So obviously COVID had started. So oh, we're wow. in lockdown. So I couldn't go out to write anyway. So like basically like 99% uh, of my writing has either been in the desk that I'm sat at now my bed wow. or my kitchen my wow kitchen. that's really the, hey you've got to have we've got to find some positives out of all of this hey yeah yeah that's right yeah, yeah absolutely that's really interesting because you've um you've done a lot in the last 12 months then you have a lot coming out and you have just blow me away that's just made me go really really <laughs> well, I mean, it's like, you know i have i have a i have like really um high level OCD so it's like um so when I when I kind of start doing something like it just kind of takes over everything so like I, I, I used to be a very very big video gamer so all of my video game playing time has gone into my writing time so it's, it probably tells you how much I used to play video games <laughs> so I don't play video games at all anymore <laughs> like, I just, uh, I, like I'd, I'd, love, I'd love to but every time that I go and sit down to play it I'm like I should really be writing oh I feel your pain Every time I try to sit down, I go, no, I've done my running. The four-year-old will wake up and I'm like, yeah, let's not introduce you to all this just yet. Exactly, um, yeah, I'm just doing that, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. it's it's been really challenging. 
I miss the gaming. I can't wait till it's a bit older and I can get back into it. Um, <laughs> but yes, I feel that 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 guilt whenever you kind of try and do something else. You have that little niggling voice going, shouldn't you be writing? Yeah, shouldn't you be doing something productive? Yeah. <laughs> yes, that stupid P word. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, David, and congratulations on the release of your book. It's very you. exciting. Um, I can't wait to get my hands on the paperback copy that will be mm -hmm. coming. Um, and just so everyone can know, where can they find you and where can they find your work? Um, so the best place to kind of find me is my website, um, which is davidgreenwriter.com. And then as soon as you go on the website, there's a big button that says sign up for the newsletter. So the newsletter is the best place because like um, it has like, it, I don't kind of spam it. It's just like a monthly, monthly thing. And it has like um, all my links on there. You get a free book for joining, which is a store, <clears throat> like a, a novelette called The Devils of Jersey. And then, you know, you, you get up to date with like all the kind of the stuff that's, that's going on. I really need to overhaul my website, though, actually, because it's, it's like I've not touched it for a while. I've been well, too busy writing books. <laughs> yes. Well, overhaul it and I'll make sure that I put a link to your website down in the comments okay. um, and in the description. But You've given me a time scale now. I have to do it before the 4th of June. Yeah, see, there you go. You got till the 4th. So oh. by now... David has updated his website. <laughs> we'll see about that. Well, if not, there will still be the big shiny button because we all love to push a big shiny button um, yeah. and sign up for the newsletter. And again, congratulations and thank you so much for joining us, David. Thanks for having me on at this very late hour for you. Yes. <laughs> That's all right. I've had my alcohol. I'm good. Had my drink. <laughs> good. All right. Thanks. Bye.